by simply connecting my left brain and my right brain, connecting at the fingertips, and lastly, connecting at my palm, I'm telling my body subconsciously to synchronize my brain hemispheres. This simple gesture that a lot of people overlook is one of the most powerful tools humans at this time can use to achieve instant balance within their minds. This is your brain, people. This is your brain. This is the manifestation of your brain, your hands. By simply doing so, you are bridging the connections. You are connecting yourself. You are balancing yourself. You are creating an eager equilibrium. You are telling your body to become whole. To amplify this technique, because this technique is very powerful, but to amplify this simple gesture of connecting your hands, to have a more holistic experience, I encourage the use of your eyes. Like I said before, your eyes are in fact your brain. If you want to center your brain, if you want to center yourself, use your eyes. Create a center point. And the best point to center yourself is where pure consciousness lies at, here in the center of your eyebrows. By connecting your hands and also connecting your eyes at a center point here, you are, oh my gosh, you just have to try it. Do like so. Connect your palms. Create a center point with your eyes. And this will balance you. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, as long as it takes, guys. This is highly powerful. Very powerful technique to achieve balance. Another thing you can do to amplify this technique is to place your tongue at the roof of your mouth. This also creates a center point and it also fuses both sides of your brain. And by doing these three things, connecting your hands, placing your tongue at the top of your roof, and having that center gaze here, you are aligning yourself with that energy. Oh my god, did you know that? Is that even true? Oh. Hey! Where are you going? What the fuck? Oh my god, oh! Look at this animals here. Oh, this is very beautiful. It's like uh, the mother and the child. They made after some long time. Oh my God, this is uh, wonderful, man. You can see the joy that is uh, among them. Mella, lovely cushion header. Pajero, oh, you beauty! What a headshot! What a head! Oh, wow, that was a good score, you! Yeah. Desert, Michael Schrett took this picture when it was uh, okay to fly near it in a pro small private plane. It is the a site of the Lockheed Range underground entrance. What's in there? Well, there are man-made, and this is the big story, no one's telling you. A large number of the UAPs are in fact deep black budget electrogravitic electromagnetic field propulsion devices based on the study of extraterrestrial vehicles that began in the 1940s. That is a fact, and we can prove it. So when you see these sort of places, just remember many of them, I want to be careful what I'm saying here, someone who is in charge of the black budget in the United States in 2022 and went out to the Lockheed Skunk Works based on some information he had. He was shown a bunch of old jet aircraft he knew he was being gaslit, and they reached out to me, and I said, what do you want? I'll give you everything we have. And that's what's happened over the last 16 months. So I cannot name this person, but they're a wonderful person of enormous integrity and a hero of our country. Um, well, you see there, that is some um, creepy information. Oh, my God. Y'all, look at this huge UFO masquerading as a cloud. Look at this. You see all that plasma out there? You see? Look at this is Argentina. This is Argentina. Look at this. This is huge. She puts it the landscape mode and you can clearly see. Look at this. Wow.
Do you think it? Look how low to the ground it is. La luna. She pans out and shows us the other side. Look at the look at the look at the darkness of that, and look at that, bro. Come on, man. That is not a cloud. That is not a cloud. Come on, y'all. That is not a cloud. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's get this shit. Share this video. Let's get. Hey, that's a weird looking cloud. Oh my god. Ha. Oh, hmm. Let's see. What's happening here? Snake carved out to stone. What is it? Oh, 12,000 dollars years ago. Let's see. Snake carved into stone. Snake. Oh, let's see. Is that how the what type of snake is that? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. There's there's two. Oh I got one. Olha isso, velho. Olha isso. Que isso? Que I can't believe about this. Lord Shiva, when you study Lord Shiva, has a lot of the same qualities as Tahuti. Except the only thing difference between Tahuti and, and, and Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva was blue. He was a blue god. In other words, he was physically actually blue. Mm -hmm. The thing that's amazing about him is he had access to these portals. And we know that Thoth from Africa, aka Tahuti, he also had access to portals. Mm. And no matter where you go, go around the world, portals exist and the rumor is that he would step into these portals and disappear and i've stood inside of some of these stargates that appear to bleed into dead end walls that have a little notch inside the uh the wall the stone mm -hmm. and they say he would put something in that notch and he would vanish and he'd be somewhere else on the planet Ooh. so no matter where you go on earth like and i believe he's lord shiva right i believe also throughout africa he's dahuti jahuti tahuti thoth uh, you go into, uh, you know, Europe. All of a sudden, he's Odin. He's he's uh, he's Mercury. Uh, you go you go into, um, he's also Thor. You go into uh, Australia. He's Thoth Amabi, and there's a huge petroglyph etched into the ground there of Thoth with the beak on the back of this thing with this circle with all these spirals going around it. And the the Aboriginals say that's Thoth Amabi on a spaceship flying through the Milky Way galaxy. Wow. Then you go to Mesoamerica, which is now, of course, now Mexico and all the South American area. He's known as Quetzalcoatl, Lorpacal, Kukulkan, Veracocha, you know, and you get all these names. It's always the same person in different bodies, same exact quality, same knowledge, the knowledge bringer, the bringer of thought, the bringer of alchemy, science, magic, medicine, healing. It's always the same person. No matter where you go on this planet, you'll find an account of this person being there. Oh, this other guy is uh, sure to very wise. Have you ever been walking somewhere and people start staring at you? You be like, what are they looking at? People can see your spirit. If it's a bad spirit, they're going to look at you crazy because you're a good spirit. You come around with your light. That's why some people be mad because you're the life of the party. You make everybody laugh when you show up. You make everybody happy when you show up. And all the attention ain't on them anymore. It's on you. Because you carry peace with you. Some people got good spirit. They're happy to see another good spirit. It's all about energy, man. It's all about your soul. Do you have love or do you have hate? And some people don't like to see your face when you come around. Because when you come around, man, 
You got all this and that, and they ain't got nothing. They feel like you trying to show off. But guess what? If I'm blessed with it, I got it. If you ain't got it, go get it. It ain't my fault you sad. You control your own emotions. I can't. It's up to you to be a boss or a worker. But when I come around, I don't care about what you're doing. I just come to have a good time. And before you ruin my moment, I'm going to stay away from you. That's why it ain't good to go everywhere. Even if you have good intentions and they're going to ruin your time, be careful. We better try to do it, man. Good vibes, man! Much love! What do you do when you find something unexplainable in the garage of your own home? Okay, so you may be wondering what I'm doing, um, recording a square of tape in my garage. In 1995, a young girl discovered a tear in the fabric of space and time. I've got some wood chips here, just a bunch of wood, and, um, I just watched this. Look at that! And she did the only thing any curious mind will do, experiment. All right, I'm gonna do a couple tests now. Um, I've got this tape measure here, and I'm just gonna let that down and see how far it goes. But the curiosity of a young mind often overpowers the warning of danger. I feel it's like vibrating. Having only one direction to move, she began her search for an exit out of the monochrome nightmare. What is this? Is there anything else in here? Occasionally in her search, the young girl would come across pieces of civilization, but they were out of place and made no sense. Is there anybody in there? What she came across next was unnerving, but offered a glimmer of hope. Hello? What is that? How did they even get in here? How did this even... There was clearly evidence of someone moving away from this car crash. If they had survived, that meant a higher chance both of them getting out of this nightmare alive. This looks more normal. Hello? That's blood. Is there someone in here? Do you need help? But that glimmer was snuffed out almost immediately. Okay, what the hell? What is this? Whoa, what the fuck? What? 
forced to run, she had to backtrack her way to almost the point of her start. But she had an alternate path, one that she found earlier. <laughs> Pursuer was relentless. No matter how fast she ran or how many turns she took, it was almost as if the entity knew exactly where she was at all times. She had no idea where she was going. All she knew was to run. And eventually, she found herself trapped. unknown how the girl's footage was recovered, as it does not appear that she ever found an exit, only that it was, and eventually released. No body was ever found. And while curiosity often comes with invaluable rewards, in the same breath it can come with dire costs. So the next time you find yourself in the presence of the unexplainable, make sure to take every precaution, because the cost may be more than you can pay. There was a previous episode where some guys had go to explore there. I'm gonna charge this negatively and then charge the pan by induction. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's charged positively by induction. Now I'm gonna use this little mini Van de Graaff, it's called a fun fly stick, and it'll charge this very, very thin piece of foil positively. You see that? And now that I've charged the pan positively, the pan repels the foil right and it's not magic it's not wingardium levios there is a new earth energy that is emerging on the planet that most people are not even aware of and this new earth energy it is said from these different sources that i'll be sharing information from it is said that now more than ever before on the planet it is time to get in the energy that you prefer to experience because there is a form of an old paradigm that is collapsing and a new level of consciousness, a new energy that is emerging. Now, I know this sounds very esoteric if you've never heard of this new earth energy before. And it's something that has been talked about in that of Eckhart Tolle, that of Dolores Cannon's books, which are all different hypnosis sessions from thousands of people all over the world where their subconscious mind comes through that of the law of one some of the most profound channelings of our time uh, and it's called the harvest the new earth you could say in the law of one is called the harvest which is this harvest where there is the ripening of a new level of consciousness on the planet and in a way a releasing of the old energy kind of like a clearing of the crops of the old energy. And then that of uh, Bashar has talked about this. This is something that since 2012, when I went through my spiritual awakening, I was very much focused on all of this because deep down when I was reading the books of Dolores Cannon, I felt like there was some form of purpose there. There was something that really rang true to me. And in this video, I want to talk about the five things you must let go of to be in the new earth energy. So there are certain things you do that will keep you into the 3D perspective that will keep you kind of lost in the matrix. And there are certain things you can do and give up to then be in the new earth energy. And what I wanted to start off by doing is reading a few quotes from Dolores Cannon's book, The Three Waves of Volunteers and the New Earth, that's what it's called. And she, by the way, didn't necessarily write her books as much as their transcripts from people that were in 
QHHT hypnosis sessions, which they were in a certain brainwave activity, their subconscious mind would come through and they would say things. And there was very consistent things that would be said from people all over the world who did not know each other. Now to understand why you might be watching this video and what your purpose may be, let's look at this quote. This says the ones who are prepared to see the changes and not crumble in the fear will be the pillars on which others will learn when nothing makes sense to them. It doesn't mean you will provide the truth to them. It just means that you're not falling down like they are. So imagine with all the chaos happening in the world, with all the reaction that is happening, imagine that then they look to someone that understands there's this, there's this new earth energy emerging. They're in a different level of consciousness. And in a way, just by being that grounded sense, it actually adds value to the other people so that they can also be in this new level of consciousness. So it's, about understanding as well that a lot of this process that people are going through is this is a natural evolution that had to happen so that our planet did not destroy itself. That's one thing it talks about in the three waves of volunteers in the new earth. It talks about how we heard the call. If you're watching this video, then most likely you heard the call because you cannot perceive which you are not the vibration of and deep down souls that heard the call, which is probably honestly many of us. I know sometimes there's this spiritual ego that can emerge in the spiritual community because it's like all these people are asleep. People aren't aware who they are. And then it's like this sense of like, I they're asleep and I'm awake. And deeper than that though, what happened is in a way in the early 1900s, when we were explore, exploring as a collective consciousness, nuclear bombs, it was literally rippling out into the universe. And there was a timeline we were on where we were literally going to destroy itself. So what it is said that happens, and by the way, this is something the law of one also mentions as far as the logos or the energy of planet earth is a consciousness in of itself that we are connected to. And in the law of one, it talks about this as well as the different logos, as the different planets have different streams of consciousness. There's like different levels to it. Now what happens is there was an energetic call that was put out where souls that had been incarnated on earth before had decided they wanted to help save the timeline of earth because it was going to destroy itself. And now the rule with our reality is, is we have free will here as a collective consciousness. We're allowed to do what we choose to do, even destroy ourselves, but we are not allowed to affect other reality systems. And that is because when a nuclear bomb goes off, it affects and ripples out into the universe and it doesn't just affect us. This is what it says in the Dolores Cannon um, books, by the way, this isn't just my, uh, you know, subjective opinion. It is more of the information that has come through hundreds, if not thousands of people from all over the world in a subconscious hypnosis state. So what it said was, is there was a call that was put out and souls that had incarnated on earth before in many different lifetimes, who had kind of maybe even moved on to re other reality systems had decided to come back knowing it was going to be challenging, knowing it was going to be hard, knowing that they were going to have to go through the process of completely forgetting who they are to then remember who they are. So what many of us may have done is gone through that process. And when, when I read about this in 2012, I remember feeling some level of truth to that. Now, the first thing that you must let go of in that of the old earth energy and the new earth energy is you must let go of that of the imbalance in the bottom three chakras. Now, this comes from that of the law of one and in the law of one or what is called the raw materials. It talks about how we all have these different rays, these different energies inside of our body. And when you think of the root chakra, which has to do with safety, feeling grounded in this reality, when you think of the sacral plexus or the, the sacral chakra, you can think of that, of your connection to your family, sexuality, creativity, and then the solar plexus, which is your willpower and your purpose. Right now, what we're seeing on the planet is everything on the news, everything in the media. What it does is it keeps you in fear and anger. It keeps you imbalanced in these bottom three chakras. It keeps you reactive to everything that's happening. And what it says in the law of one 
is that we must balance these bottom three chakras out to then move into the heart chakra. So if we don't balance out the bottom three chakras, we can't move into the heart chakra and the new earth consciousness is involved with it, the opening of the heart. Now the three, also think about it like this, third dimension, 3D. It's all about duality. It's good, it's bad, it's light, it's dark, it's, um, it's fear, it's anger, it's these, uh, these energies of separation. If there was a catchphrase of it, it would be like separation <laughs> and being asleep. And most of the things have been tailored in our reality to have it to where we are in reaction to everything that's happening. Reaction to the media. Here's another quote by Dolores Camp, by, from the book, The Three Waves of Volunteers. It says, the media and the movies are showing you their desperation as they insist in presenting to the masses information that is completely negative and fear-based. Subject matters such as murder, death, betrayal, attacks, and such that keep the consciousness focused on these matters, as opposed to portraying in the media images of hope and inspiration. But nonetheless, there are enough of these positive messages being broadcasted at this time, like that of a domino effect. They are no longer stoppable. There's a momentum with the power of the internet where information is getting out there, where people are waking up more and more. And in the 3D mentality, it's all about being asleep, fear, anger, people. Wonderful people, thanks for waking up with this problem. Much love to yourself, you see? Without those videos that has passed, I'd like you to leave a comment. They call you a transmission. Because here we are family and you are, that feedback is very important to helping to review this channel, you see? And now there is that video that has passed and that guy was talking about a dodo, a shift that is going to happen or is happening and there have been a lot of videos talking about that, you see? But what I believe in, I don't know if it's true or it's not true, but what I believe in is that we should spread love all over this world, you see? So that the coming generation for those that you come after us, we find a place full of good vibes and love and you can end all this chaos and uh, disturbing images that uh, we mostly see around us, you see? And uh, life can be good, people can live as well, full of love and good vibes. Respect to yourself for watching, you are loved and respected. Keep it tuned for another five episodes that will be coming your way. As you continue to watch, good vibes, man. Check, check, check this shit out. Look. Wait, Let's this go. real quick. Building real. Pythagoras, right? Facts. Notice there's a bubble. Facts. Certain bubbles. One. One hundred. Not two. Where? Three. They're showing you there's a dome. I am your employer. And these many different worlds. In this scene. Facts. If you're watching it. Who else going to tell you? They Me. can't tell you because they want to tell you the entertainment side of it. Facts. I don't care about none of that, bro. Definitely don't. I'm going to show you what they really show me. The truth. This is Peter Will. That part. Yeah, the movie Pr Prometheus. Look what they're showing you. Wake up. Well, that's required a lot of things. Oh, man, nobody, nobody better than me on this album. That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, my God. Oh. That's scary. All right. So it's been like three months. And that copper is keeping this water clear with no algae. If I wouldn't have had this copper in there, this would be nasty. And I would have to clean it like every week just to have the nice clean water so copper is your friend huh. that's interesting just looking at me while wow, i just heard a knock i'm ho i hope the camera picked it up look at that face guys you think that's that's not a face carved into the stone could that have happened from erosion or was that something else that's washed away. Guys, that's a face. 
Tell me there's not a face carved into that rock. Look at that. That's unbelievable. Wow. I'm sitting here, I'm walking, I'm watching everything, and look at that. It looks like a face to me. Look at that, guys. Come on. Wow. <sighs> wow, wow, wow. That looks... So, what the hell? Is that the thing? Oh my god. What are profile lines? Each profile, whether you are a 24, a 46, a 13, a 52, a 25, each profile is made up of two profile lines. And there are a total of six lines in human design. And these six lines are actually based on the hexagram. So whatever your profile is, you will have a combination of two numbers. The first line is called the investigator. The second line is called the hermit. The third line is called the martyr. The fourth line is called the opportunist. The fifth line is the heretic. And the sixth line is the role model. Now, um, I'll do separate videos on this, but the investigator is all about investigating. Um, investigators are here to collect information collect data. They're all about creating safety and a sense of security. And they do that by collecting information, by learning about um, the subject, by learning about what's going on before they're ready to take action. Uh, first line is not necessarily interested in um, socializing. It's more interested in staying home and researching and, and doing its own thing. The second line, it's called the hermit because it is often very shy introverted it likes to to be by itself and the second line is a natural um, the hermit often has gifts and talents and abilities that that amaze other people and that they necessarily are not um, aware of the hermit is here to be called out by the right people so uh, the right person uh, will come along and call you out so if you're second line they will call you out and it'll allow you to show your gifts and show your abilities and and to, to let the world see who you are. The second line is a projection line as well. So this is the line that um, often gets projected on. People will say, oh, you, you know, what about this? And you could be doing that and you could be doing this. And in reality, you might not be um, interested or you might not want to do it, but you might be tempted to live up to that expectation and projection from other people. The third line is called the martyr. I know it sounds um, it sounds weird. Uh, human design has keynotes. Keynotes these are the the words that describe the quality of you know that they're used to describe more than just one quality. But when you say the martyr, it actually refers to the fact that the third line is very willing to stand up and speak the truth, and it often gets the heat for speaking the truth. The third line is all about trial and error. It's all about experiencing things. It's all about learning what works. It's learning about what doesn't work. So the first 30 years of the third line are uh, the years where most mistakes are made. So you're talking about like, you know, bad decisions. You're talking about wrong jobs, wrong relationships, wrong marriages, that kind of thing, right? And after the 30th year, after the first Saturn return, it's not like challenges stop. It's that the third line becomes very wise about its life experiences. So you might still get challenges in your life, but you're much more able to deal with them uh, productively. The fourth line is the opportunist. Again, it sounds a little bit sin sinister, but it's really not. The opportunist refers to the fact that the fourth line is here to network and to get opportunity uh, opportunities from the network. The fourth line is all about creating foundations and it creates foundations through creating relationships, through establishing relationships with other people. The fourth line is very invested in its relationships. The fourth line is friendly, it's sociable. Uh, this is somebody you can go to if you need resources, if you need to find out where to go to, to get something. Um, the fourth line also sometimes um, suffers from, fee from people fatigue and it's beneficial for the fourth line to uh, take time for itself and to decompress. The fifth line is the heretic. 
the fifth line is also projection line like the second line and the fifth line gets a lot of crap the fifth line gets projected on and it's uh, it projects on other people as well the fifth line when it doesn't live up to other people's expectations other people are very quick to burn you at the stake uh, i know it sounds drastic but um this is where the heretic comes from the fifth line is willing to show up in a different, original, out-of-the-box way. It's willing to take charge, to be the general. It's one of the qualities of it, of it, right? And it's often um, heretical in in the way it approaches. It. It's it's ready to burn old structures and create new, innovative ways. And a lot of the times, society doesn't like new and innovative, innovative and different, right? So the fifth line can get um, crap from it a lot of the times, but. The fifth line is all often seen as the savior. It might be seduced by the idea of jumping in and saving other people, but this is appropriate when there's a crisis, when there's a real problem. Otherwise, the, the fifth line is here to create innovative and practical solutions for people. The fifth line is not fluffy. It's not like the fourth line that likes to socialize and, and, and all that. The fifth line is more of these are the people that I need to help, and this is the solution that I have for them. Fifth line is very practical. It doesn't waste its, waste its time on impractical um, things. Um, and I was just going to say briefly, the best example that I have is Britney Spears. She's a 5'1". You know, everybody was all about Britney Spears. She was this huge superstar. And then, you know, the second the woman suffered from a mental breakdown, everybody um, started, um, you know, she was basically dismissed. She was marginalized, right? She was burnt at the stake. And the sixth line is the last of the six. The sixth line is the role model. The sixth line is similar to the third line in that it has three, the first 30 years of the sixth line are the time when it experiences things, it's trial and error. Then it has 30 to 50, where it goes up on the roof, as they call it, meaning this is the time when the sixth line somewhat removes itself from society. It stays to itself. It chills out. It observes. It wants to integrate everything that it has learned. And after after 50, after the age of 50, it comes off the roof. When it comes off the roof is when it really starts embodying the wisdom that it has acquired and it steps into the true expression of who it is. This is where the role model comes from. The role model is not looking at somebody and admiring them. I'm, I'm a four six, so it's not like my six is here to get admiration and like I don't need a monument bent, built <laughs> to me, right? I mean, it would be nice, but right? But um, it's just an example of living a truthful, authentic life. And the sixth line loves integrity, hates hypocrisy. The sixth line just wants to live its most authentic, truthful life. And the sixth line is because it's one of, it's the last of the six, it further, right? It's always about the future. Where are we going? What's the new direction? The sixth line is about the big vision, the big picture. Um, it's not here for the mundane crap. It's here to see the big vision and to move, um, to move society into the big, uh, improved vision for the future. So these are the six profile lines.